Welcome to the August 23rd uh, City Council Rules Select Committee meeting. Um, I, I'm here to advise you that you are being audio and video recorded. So we will start with public comment. Is there, are there any uh, members of the uh, public that would like to speak? I only see Councillor Shara. She may just be listening, which is fine too. Oh, hello. I'm listening. She's just listening. Thank you. Um, so if there's no one, let's see. Yeah, I don't see anyone else. I guess I will take this opportunity to read um, the few items that are relevant to tonight's agenda that Councillor Nash has sent in because he couldn't be with us uh, for public comment. Um, and that these are related to our agenda items. So he wanted us to, to explore the scope of authority for legislative matters to amend items, uh, the structure of city council meetings with the planning board around zoning matters, and the not insurmountable complication of finance committee occurring during city council, where we seek information from the mayor and department heads and sometimes deli deliberate at the same time. So Laura, without any uh, further public comment, you roll call, please. Councilor Mayori. Here. Member Simon. Here. Um, Councilor Foster. Here. Member Baskin. Here. And Councilor Dwight. Here. Okay. So first on the agenda, agenda is the uh, approval of the minutes of August 5th, 2021. Any um, move, move to approve, please. Second. Roll call. Um, I'm sorry, Councilor Mayori. Yes. Member Simon. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. And Member Baskin. Yes. Uh oh, is, is the chair frozen? Uh, Vice Chair Simon, okay, I'm back, I think. Okay. Can you hear me? You were all frozen for a minute. Yeah. So, well, you... <laughs> okay, so we're back. So I assume that the minutes were approved in my yeah. increment absence, <laughs> okay. So moving on, topics related to section 2.6 council committees, committee assignments, um, Scope of committee work and many assignments, um, how many assignments councilors have, committee structure, purpose, and council participation in subcommittee meetings. Shall we open the conversation? Councilor Foster. I'll take a first volley for the conversation. All right. um, and to Councillor Nash's question, and I think a, a conversation a bunch of us have had about finance committee occurring within council meetings. Um, and I sort of understand why, but what that's led me to is I wonder if we want to consider um, all councillors are on finance committee and in which case there isn't a recommendation made um, and or uh, perhaps not having a finance committee, in which case the entire city council is the finance committee. Um, that was volley one. Um, and, I, and I know I don't have the historical knowledge on that, but I've noticed that we, we all participate heavily uh, in that piece of the meeting. And I understand there, there can be a need for uh, time sensitive or more involved finance committee items, in which case finance committee would meet. Um, although that seems to happen so rarely uh, it sure seems to me as though a special meeting of the council could be called in those instances that it's needed. Councilor Dwight. I, I believe actually we're required to have a finance committee, but that's one. Actually, I think, you know, the most germane point that uh, member Baskin brought up in the discussion was the fact that the public, this stuff was presented, discussed without any access to the public to participate. And, and I think that's the crux of the problem in the issue. And it's true. We're, we're dealing with financial orders. We digest them, we debate them, and we vote on them. And the public 
their only opportunity to speak on it if they're inclined to is to speak in public comment at the beginning. Um, whereas we noted with previous discussions, public comment could be filled with lots and lots and lots of things. So I think one of the things to consider is, is one, somehow embedding a public comment period in the finance, if, if the council meetings, if the finance committee meeting stays, stays embedded in the city council meeting, there should also, when you break for finance, you might consider actually having a public comment section there. Um, uh, oh, and I see the solicitor has shown up, so this will be helpful. But it, it, the um, if because in that context, it doesn't. It, it the we have the same advantages and address one of the major, I think, flaws and disadvantages. And I think it was. I think. Um, I think Ezekiel was absolutely right and spot on that. I mean, especially given the fact that uh, fiduciary oversight is one of our perhaps most important role as, as uh, counselors. So um, the fact that we can conduct this business in plain sight, but at the same time without participation is problematic. And I think if we're gonna craft something, that might be the approach we consider or some approach that would allow for public comment at the point at which uh, items are introduced and, um, and expand debate and discussion relative to those financial words. So I mean, I think you'll find most of the times if you're talking about budgetary transfers for a dugout on Main's field, probably not so much, but, but in the main, I mean, I think it, it, would, it would be helpful, particularly as we proceed towards budget. Vice Chair Simon. So I've previously uh, offered my opinion that I don't think any subcommittees ought to meet during a, a council meeting. Um, it, I am curious, though, as to why there's such interest in uh, everybody wanting to be on a finance committee. And, and I, 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 I tend to think that that seems to drive the let's have it during the city council because we're all there. But um, I mean, the work of a subcommittee is to is to get through preparatory work on topics for the larger council to decide to take action. And I wouldn't think it would be a problem for the subcommittee itself to be able to present and guide discussion. I would assume the finance director would be present on these topics also so that uh, discussion and questions could happen by the full council without the guise of a subcommittee meeting happening. Um, so I guess I, I guess I wanna ask the sitting councilors, what's wrong with the scenario that I describe versus the current practice or the suggestions of, of Councillor Foster? Councillor Dwight. Um, I, I have no objection, actually. I mean, to give you an historical frame, when we first, uh, before the new charter, the, the city council would be sitting up at the uh, front and the mayor would be sitting in the middle presiding over the meeting. And to one side would be the clerk and the other side would be the financial director. And they'd all be present during the course of that. And essentially finance committee became embedded um, as a practical matter. But it's a legacy matter. There's, I, I think, um, there's, as far as I can tell, there's no reason not to have a finance committee meet just as any other meeting and then come back with recommendations. Um, and having counselors uh, participate if they need to, but it, you know, that's the other issue about of a meeting long quorum issues. But um, yeah, I, I have no objection to that. That is, that would also provide the same. I mean, the, the issue that I'm most concerned about, which is access by the public to participate or to comment. Um, if you have it, if you have a meeting specifically dedicated to those items, and actually if the finance committee can make its own rules relative to public comment and can keep it to the agenda items as opposed to what we have in council, which is um, uh, freewheeling and wide open. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to just weigh in and, and then um, Member Bass can, can speak. I was going to say that, um, yeah, I, I was thinking a lot about having 
the way the finance committee is embedded in our meetings. And, and my assumption is that that's a bit easier on, this, on the finance director and instead of having the you know, two different meetings to ultimately address questions. So there's that to think about. Um, and also, you know, the finance committee has special powers uh, to request information. And those would, if we got rid of the committee and all the counselors were um, essentially part of the finance what the committee or not or 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 act would they would also have those powers to request that information and I see no problem with that but I just wanted to state that you know when I was reading through the rules you know the, the idea is this finance committee has kind of a special purview to request information financial information um, so it, but it does sound like we're debating whether to kind of get rid of the idea of, of a finance committee or to change change the nature of the committee a bit. Um, if we got rid of a committee, then perhaps the idea of public access would change too, which would we still have. So that's um, that's what I'm hearing. And you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Member Baskin. Yeah, I'm, I would be, I like both of the things that are on the table more than what we have right now. So I, I think that the it makes sense to either move finance committee out of the meeting and have it function like a normal subcommittee or abolish it completely if that's allowed, which it sounds like is questionable and maybe we are required to have a finance committee. I would love Solicitor Seawell's input on that. Um, but it, that, I do feel like it doesn't, I don't know, I'm not sure if the, the value of the committee. I guess I'm curious about, I mean, this is the, the topic we're talking about, but I'm I'm curious about all of the committees. And so it where we are focusing on finance right now, and I don't want us to drift too much. Maybe it makes sense to just talk about finance first, but it I I'm not I'm not quite clear how they work exactly. Um, even having been to a couple of them, I they do they vote on rules? Are the rules available somewhere? Are they, how, like when I went to legislative matters, I was just like invited to speak and like ask questions. And like, I see that like council president Shara has her hand up right now. And if we were in like a council meeting and she wasn't on the council, she couldn't just be recognized to talk without like a whole vote to recognize someone. So I, I guess I'm curious, like, how are they, how are the committees supposed to work, kind of? Right. Um, well, let's see what Councilor um, President Shiera has to say. Hi. Since this, so this might slightly answer your question, Ezekiel, or I'll just note that since this meeting is cross-posted as a full council meeting and a subcommittee meeting, if, you know, I still am going to ask the committee's permission if I can speak, but um, that allows me to speak within open meeting law. Um, and I just want, one point I just want to make in terms of finance that I don't think has been raised yet and kind of goes to the practicality of how we do it now is that since there's such a large volume of financial orders and it's something that we, um, you know, we do twice a month, quite a bit of it, it's a large part of what the council does. Um, if the meeting was going to be moved out of a council meeting, you would likely need to do it twice. So whoever sat on that committee would probably uh, just meeting once a month, which is generally what our subcommittees do, would probably not be sufficient, and it would have to be a meeting, um, a, a committee that met more often. Um, Councillor, uh, well, everyone there. Let's see, Councillor Foster, and Council Droid, and Solicitor Seawald. Councillor Foster. Thanks. What Councilor Shara um, just brought up was something that that I was thinking about finance in the potential of it being a standalone committee. That that there are so many financial orders and they tend to be time sensitive. And also, as a counselor, even though I don't sit on the finance committee, I actually find it to be an incredibly helpful and important committee to be paying attention to. So, like, I guess technically during finance committee meetings, here we are on Zoom, like. I could go get a snack and wander away for an hour and come back, but I would miss I would miss so much important work of the council that honestly, as a counselor, I would probably feel compelled if finance committee were separate from the regular council meetings to be going to those meetings as well. Um, they they touch every aspect of the city and, and are 
fairly significant to what we do. And so moving the finance committee to be separate from council meetings would actually increase our, I think, increase our workload pretty significantly. Um, and also then may or may not meet some of the points of what we're looking at here is um, how the committee flows or, or um, you know, for the, the minimal trade-off of making the meeting slightly shorter by not having to consider each financial order twice. Um, I, I think actually the behind the scenes work of the council would increase pretty significantly. So that's just to member Simon's question about kind of why, um, you know, I, I definitely would be trying to make every single finance committee meeting and that would be, that would be pretty difficult. Um, Councilor Dwight. I will defer to the solicitor. I, I think he, he can provide us with some information that might cut to the chase. Right. Solicitor Seawald, yes, we have some questions for you. Hello there. Hi. Welcome from Martha's Vineyard. Beautiful oh. here. <laughs> so, uh, so let me just address a couple of things. Um, I have never researched the question of whether a city is required to have a finance committee or a prudential committee, or they're called different things in different communities, but towns certainly are required to have them. So I can't really answer that. There is a statute that talks about towns. There is another statute that, that states that statutes that refer to towns are presumed to refer to cities also, unless otherwise specified. I don't know how this uh, how that statute applies to cities, but um, can you hear me? Yeah. It's my, I just got to notice that my internet is unstable, so uh, <laughs> I'm not at home. So um, that, that's one thing. I think you do need to have a finance committee. That's my sense. You need to have a finance committee. You need to have somebody who's focused specifically and solely on financial matters, which Councilor Dwight uh, properly described as the single most important and single most influential um, work that this that this body does. I mean, that is really where the city council's power is. Don't tell the mayor that I said that, but that's really, that was a joke. Uh, that's really where your, the, the city council's authority lies is um, in the budget. We saw that last year in the police budget and uh, you know, otherwise, as you know, uh, other committees have found out, charter committees and ordinance committees have found out, the city council really doesn't have that much uh, to do with the day-to-day -day operation of the city, but that's really where your, your authority is. And um, I think that, that the finance committee is the single most important committee that you have. I have always wondered about this whole process of all of the councilors participating in these finance committee meetings, because although it's posted as a as a, uh, a council meeting, councilors who are not on the finance committee are still not on the finance committee, and it is not the city council that's meeting. Just like this is not a, a meeting of the city council, and to suggest that you post it as a city council meeting, and now city councilors can participate and deliberate in the rules committee as though they were members of the committee is just wrong. That's not right. They're not members of this committee, and they should participate in this committee in the same way you would allow any other member of the public to participate in a meeting. Because they're members of the public. They're strangers to this committee. They may have some information that is important for the committee. Um, you know, certainly Council President Shiera, having, you know, spent the last what is, what, however, 18 months running meetings like this, she has an insight into these meetings that no one else in this city really has. And it's important to hear from her, but she's not on this committee. Sorry to speak to you about you in the third person, uh, but she's, you know, the, the council president is not on this committee. But so, sir, and, you know, uh, what, what happens when we recognize people? You know, we often recognize like a kind of expert when we have um, meetings, even full council meetings, we'll recognize someone to bring that information to us. You know, is that the missing step? But that should be saying? on the, that's usually on the agenda that you're going to invite somebody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the chair can allow and the city council can approve um, allowing members of the public to speak. And on this committee, I would think that the chair has the, the right to recognize whomever you want. Um, you know, chair. Um, however, the fact that somebody's a counselor doesn't mean that they have any special 
right to participate. That's all I'm saying is there's no right to participate just because you're a counselor. You may want the council president's input on something as an expert, but in that sense, she's an expert as a, a member of the public expert. Okay, so it, it's, it's just a fallacy to say that just post it as a city council meeting. This is the point I'm trying to make. Post it as a city council meeting and all of a sudden councilors are participating without restriction. That's just not right. That's not, this is never going to be a city council meeting. It's a, a select rules committee meeting. And you, and so I, I don't know if I've added to this or not, but those are my impressions so far. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Councillor Dwight. Um, actually, what, what Alan just brought up were a number of items of debate that I've had with Councillor Nash, coincidentally, yeah. but the, the um, the fact, uh, and this is to Ezekiel's question about one, the function of committees and the rules about committees. We lay out, as you see in our rules, um, an outline of rules for the subcommittees to function under. But then it's up to those committees to decide within those parameters how they will conduct it. And what you'll see in the past and present is some committees allow a give and take uh, with the public or with whomever that the chair recognizes um, or that the body votes to recognize. In some cases, in some cases, in some other cases, that's not allowed, depending on the rules of that committee. Uh, it, uh, the thing is, is the subcommittees have more flexibility, principally because they're devoted to one task, uh, the task to address the orders that are before them, and that's it. Uh, the city council has a larger menu, if you will, as we as we go through the process. And as such, that's part of our earlier discussion and our ongoing discussion about how it can be done efficiently, fairly, and correctly. But so we don't, you know, die of old age in the process of any meeting. So there is room. There's wiggle room in the subcommittee meetings. The subcommittees as the solicitor just described, are basically to, to do more granular research and study and analysis of a particular item that's forwarded. And it allows, essentially, if you will, if you think about it, um, as these items come up, it allows an opportunity for them to percolate. So that by the time that they come back to the body, there's a more full knowledge or understanding, not necessarily an optimal one, or a more full uh, uh, sense of it. And as opinions are being formed, um, and that would that would contribute to the debate on the floor, presumably. That's that's essentially the purpose of committees. Um, as far I I had always understood, but I actually don't remember reading the law anywhere that we are required by Mass General Law. But I think Alan's going to start researching this uh, more thoroughly. But I believe we are required to have at least some. Uh, dimension of our council that is presents as uh, uh, a finance committee or whatever we choose to call it, but does those same functions. So um, abolishing the finance committee, I, I don't really see the advantage of that. And uh, I think to uh, Karen, or, I mean, Councillor Foster's point, the the benefit of having it with incorporated, incorporated in the meeting is it does allow an opportunity for the counselors to understand the, the um, more deeply the dimensions of the discussion. Uh, it's po entirely possible and probably not likely, at least if you go by other committees, they're not going to show up for those subcommittee meetings unless there's a particular item that interests them. But in this case, it actually immerses us in it. Uh, but I still, I, but more germane to the point that you brought up before, and I think that's absolutely right. I think that process is too whiplash. It goes way too quickly, and particularly as far as the public's access to understanding. And, um, you know, particularly if we do discuss the point of eliminating the second reading, um, and I don't know if you saw the last council meeting, we basically overrode the rules, I think, no less than four times in order to allow for financial orders to pass through. And this is also the Councilor Foster's point. There's, um, <laughs> there are, the Department of Revenue has certain rules about the clock and timing and, and then other things that are dictate the timing on financial orders or contracts and bids and bid processes. And those 
if we throw those into two additional meetings in a month, as Councilor Shara uh, suggested, would probably be likely if we did that, if we pulled the Finance Committee meeting out of the body, that um, that would slow the process down and could slow the process down that would hamstring us even further. Those overrides of the rules last time were basically to try and stay within the, uh, the best prospect for finding the best uh, bids on most of these things, or, you know, barring hurricanes, the opportunity to actually do the work, like the dugout work and so on and so forth. So uh, the, I, I, I'm not offering a solution. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have one. But I am. I'm giving you. I'm trying to present all the problems as they seem to pop up as we as we pull this loose thread on the sweater. Let's see, Member Baskin. I think there's a way that that push for timeliness, and I think this is what you, Councilor Dwight was just talking about. But the the urgency inhibits the council from letting things percolate and be like fully debated. Like when you have to pass something the same night it's presented to you, you get the financial order, maybe in an amended agenda of 48 hours before the meeting, it goes to the finance committee within the meeting. It's passed from the finance committee with a positive recommendation. It's passed in two readings and then it's ordered. Like that, there's no space for the deliberative work that the council does with its other committees. Like I have, I've watched at least somewhat the work that like community resources and legislative matters did on like the, the plastic, the plastics ordinance. Like that was an exhaustive amount of work and deliberation and thought. And like the financial orders go through so quickly with very little of that deliberation. I think in part because the, the committee is situated within the meeting I, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand that there, there are things that need to happen really urgently. And I also think that like, this is the, as, as Solicitor Seawald says, this is the principal function of the council. And so if the principal function of the council is being expedited in this way, particularly such that like, sometimes when, when counselors have requested not to do two readings, there's been significant pushback from the executive. Like that feels... I don't know. I'm, I think there is a value to having this space for deliberation with financial orders in a way that doesn't currently exist. Thank you, Member Baskin. Um, Vice Chair Simon. I, you know, in each of these meetings, I've, I, I still have come to the conclusion that things are just, they seem so much more complicated to me than they, than they ought to be. That that there are ways to streamline this just for the sake of not wasting time that, that you could do here. I mean, you ought to have a finance committee because I think one of the roles of the council ought to be oversight over the executive, and this is critical, um, but you should let the committees do their work and the committees should get to know this stuff through their granular in-depth work. And if, if People who are not if members who are not on the committee, if council members who are not on the committee want to learn, they can go to these meetings. Sure, if you want to put in that extra time, that is a that's an excellent um, um, trait for people to have to want to know more than they know today. Um, but you ought to have a subcommittee do subcommittee work. Now, I looked at a I looked at a handful of finance committee agendas while we were discussing here and. Most of this is pretty routine stuff. In fact, a lot of this stuff could probably even go on consent agendas. Minor transfers from this department to that department. I mean, those, I don't know if you're having separate votes on those, but they don't even actually need that as long as your subcommittee is doing their work. There are other items like, uh, like approving um, um, the budgets for, um, um, oh, Christ, what are they called? The, um, uh, the, the the water department and the sewer department are uh, enterprise funds. I'm sorry, enterprise funds. I just forgot the word for a moment. Um, which are much more substantial in nature and uh, are tied to the issue of the budget and probably need to take some time for some some full council discussion. But 
you know, if, if you scheduled your finance committee at 6 p.m. and had a council meeting at 7 p.m., I mean, that's one way to make it accessible to other council members at the same time to allow the, the, the subcommittee members to, to do their job. And it's the subcommittee members that ought to be able to explain to the full council what they're voting on. I mean, that's, that's what you should do. So, you know, I, I appreciate people want to know more. They should want to know more, but, but I just think you got to let the subcommittees do their work. Um, for a lot of the reasons that have been described tonight and, and then have the council weigh in where, and when there really is a need for lots of discussion and routinely approve for those things that really should be routinely approved. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'm just going to weigh in a bit too. I kind I, I agree with Councillor Foster that this is essentially, I mean, Practically, finance is something as counselors, you know, our constituents ask us is, is going to be the thing constituents ask us about. So if there's going to be a six o'clock meeting, it, it then kind of behooves the counselors, all counselors to have to, to log on. And that is going to make a very long uh, stretch. So I have concerns about that because I, I understand the subcommittee should do their work, but I, I feel like finance is special in the sense that it is our main purview and it is something that practically um, you know we we really need to to be part of that discussion to, because practically that's what constituents call and ask me about um, but I hear I hear what you're saying too about you know to, that the subcommittee can then go and explain to, to full council and um, I guess I was also uh, wondering what Ms. Member Baskin said, do you, do you feel um, if we took Councilor Dwight's suggestion and had a public comment period uh, for the finance um, subcommittee, that that would feel better in terms of that kind of rushed arm twisting sense that you had? Now, that, that, the caveat being, I mean, if you have public comment, it doesn't have to be relevant to finance. Correct. I mean, it's not a public hearing in which the, the comments have to be directed on finance. So that's just something I was thinking. If you had public comment right before fi for the finance subcommittee, but hopefully people would have would stick to it. Yes, Member Baskin. I don't think it really serves to have two comments in what would in essence be the same meeting. If it's in, I mean, I, I think it will just have people repeating themselves. For the most practically speaking, like I. I mean, this is part of why I think it does make more sense to have it be a separate meeting if it's going to continue to exist as a subcommittee. I don't know. It just like it doesn't. I also I said this in a previous meeting, but like having it in the middle of the meeting and not function like the other subcommittees doesn't model what subcommittees are for the public and it doesn't model public engagement in the subcommittees. And so it I think it sort of it discourages the public from attending other subcommittees because it feels less participatory. And I do think that like putting it, I don't know about putting it before the meeting with its own comment period, like it, I, I'm just not sure that that will, will do. I also think it's like the space for deliberation, like, and that's what the, that's what the two readings are supposed to be, but they don't really function like that, particularly because they're suspended all the time. But if finance actually met as a separate meeting, then there would by nature be that space, like something would have to go to the finance committee in its own meeting, it would be discussed there and recommended. And then there would be, you know, a week or two weeks until the, the council meeting, during which time members of the public could go to the finance committee meeting, listen to the discussion there, and then reach out to their counselors and speak about the matters informed by the committee's discussion and work, rather than there's no opportunity for that when the finance committee is nested within the, the city council meeting. And that's, I think, one thing I've taken away from the work we've done so far is that the main way that constituents are meant to engage with their counselors is outside of the meetings. Like public comment is, is a cherry like it on top it's not supposed to be the primary way that we engage with our counselors we're supposed to be working outside the meetings as engaged citizens meeting with our counselors talking about the issues that are important to us and so if something is introduced and approved in the same council meeting with no subcommittee that doesn't 
there's no space for the public to do that. And that does concern me. Um, even though it's overcomplicating, it may be, or to, it's more work to have the meeting be separate. I, I don't know. Thank you. Um, Councilor Floyd. Sorry. Um, actually, I think uh, the vice chair has offered an elegant solution. I actually like that idea. But here's the difference between financial orders and every other order. And, and, and Ezekiel mentioned the, uh, the plastic bag ordinance, for instance. One, the plastic bag ordinance is a law that we are creating that would actually that has that has uh, it has to have the strength and rigidity of law. But more importantly, it's referred. Financial orders are not referred out of council. They're not introduced to the council and then referred to the finance. They go directly to the finance committee from the executive. That's the difference. There's no other item that does that. And I think this uh, speaks somewhat to what Ezekiel was saying, because when their first reading is when they're introduced on the floor uh, for anything else, any other item, we refer to committee. We refer to planning legislative matters, community resources, um, and therefore the public or whomever is put on notice that this is coming. It's going to subcommittee if you wanna have a discussion with it there, and then it's coming back before the council for further discussion. It doesn't have, the first time anybody usually sees the financial orders is when they're introduced in the agenda. So that's just a, essentially a 48 hour heads up. And this is what you, if you want to comment on this. Um, and actually, historically, the public used to pay closer attention <laughs> to the agendas when they were posted. Um, and they were and they showed up in the newspaper and things like that. Not so much anymore. Um, People usually show up to public comment and are surprised to see items on the agenda that, that we'd be discussing. Um, and so essentially public comment has basically become a public forum where people speak truth to power by and large. And sometimes then we've had the example that they'll speak to a budgetary item or so on. Uh, to the chair's point, as far as public comment, if it were embedded in, in the meeting, you can actually set the rules. You can set separate, separate public comment rules for that saying, speaking only to the items on the agenda. You're, um, it doesn't give people an opportunity to start talking about, you know, um, <laughs> I'm not going to say, there's like five things I was going to say that would be <laughs> controversial already. Uh, talk about uh, uh, cat maintenance, we'll say. <laughs> so we don't have... We don't have to have that. So that's really not, that's not something to put the kibosh on that. But I, I go back to Al's recommendation. I actually think, and in fact, I don't think it's without precedent. I have a memory of the, something like that. But to have the finance committee convene before the council meeting gives a little more of that separation that, that Ezekiel's talking about. But it still doesn't give, they still don't have the notification and the notice of, of um, in some cases, a month before the item actually goes before, uh, before the subcommittees. And the challenges I said that exist and stand are the, uh, it's a different time clock. Now, when there is controversy and it's pretty rare, it's, it's, I, I, that's another point that Al makes. I mean, a lot of it's perfunctory, but there are occasional pushback on items and has been historically. Um, the executive is perfectly entitled to push back, but it's up to the council whether to decide whether to proceed. And the pushback, I've heard it, I don't know if it constitutes pushback, Ezekiel, but pretty much all I can remember is some members saying, do we really need to do two readings because I have some questions. Um, and it usually, and that's a relevant case to make. And usually what I've heard is the mayor will make, will assure that they will get the information that they need before, before the final vote when we don't suspend the rules. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, as I said, <laughs> I think our solution is good. It's not, it's not a panacea. There are all, a lot of the complications and problems that we're discussing are still going to exist and be there. And some of it's beyond our control. And I do think I actually take Al, I take your point that um, 
the more streamlined and more uh, 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 isolated these are, the more likely we're going to at least improve what we've all identified as basically not being the best way to introduce and discuss financial orders. But I'm not sure it would be the ideal solution. But as I said, I haven't got one in my pocket. And Councilor Dwight, what's your feeling about, um, well, the finance director and the mayor would possibly have to be at that earlier meeting as well, just to keep that in mind. That would be the, that would be the case. And, yeah. um, and in fact, embedded in our rules is, the, is, is to say that we uh, have the right to invite with uh, enough lead time, we can invite both. So. Great. Uh, any other? Yeah. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. And I just wanted to offer the suggestion for whatever the council ends up doing that you shouldn't build your process around the exception, the creating a process for the exception mm -hmm. that happens once in a while. I mean, again, I looked at five or six agendas here and it's all pretty routine stuff and that stuff should it shouldn't present any problem it really shouldn't present a problem if if the finance committee is convinced that something should advance um then it will advance and if it shouldn't advance but the 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 executive thinks it should then you know the council will decide that too ultimately finally about whether it should happen or not but um it's extremely rare from what I could see that the finance committee even has a substantial agenda. Once in a while, there it looks like there's eight or nine things that all have to be talked about, but most of the time it's a couple things that, God, if you spent five minutes on it, I'd be surprised because they're transferring money from this account to that account. So. Oh, Laura. I just wanted to let everyone know, I got a um, text from attorney Seawald that he got booted off. Oh. He was having trouble logging back in. So he's, no cell service so he's called in on the house phone so ah. the, there's a, a phone number with us which is attorney seawald oh that's good number. to know okay um all right well i guess um unless attorney seawald had something to add i would say i mean either we can make a motion or we could move on to you know i want to stick to the agenda here to the you know to looking at this kind of the structure and purpose of of the other committees in the scope, um, and unless some, anyone else has something they want to unpack around finance, I can't, Solicitor Seawald, did you have a comment? It might be hard um, for you to raise your hand. I, I don't know how to raise my hand on the phone. That's so, okay. Uh, Sorry, so, uh, uh, I, I missed a whole lot of that of, yeah. of your deliberation. I've been off for for some time. Right. Um, but let me tell you what I was thinking before I went off. Uh, I tend to agree with the vice chair that this, you know, this that most of what the finance committee does is relatively routine. Um, and, you know, given the importance of the finance committee, could I throw out there the possibility that those who are on the finance committee um, maybe would get some relief from you know, as many committee meetings, I know on the agenda is the, you know, was a line item for the number of committee meetings, uh, committees that each uh, counselor is on. Perhaps finance committee would be considered more than one or uh, be given, you know, given that there could be a lot of work, particularly around budget time. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, but I do believe, uh, and, you know, I, I was looking at uh, whether, uh, a finance committee is required, and I'm coming to the conclusion that a finance committee is not required, although I'm very hesitant to even suggest that because of what I said before and the importance of finances in the finance committee. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I'm of a mind of exactly opposite of eliminating the finance committee because, you know, a, the full council is, is rather, you know, it's a rather large body to really delve in detail into these, uh, the issues that arise. Um, so, you know, I would encourage to encourage this committee to recommend keeping the finance committee, but maybe somehow lightening the load of finance committee meetings. Otherwise, if it's if it's a burden to have meetings outside of the council meeting. Okay, thank you, Solicitor Seawald. Uh, Member Baskin. 
I do think that what's happening right now is the full committee, the full council is delving because finance committee is functionally participated in equitably by the full com the full council, except that then only the people on the finance committee vote. And what has also seemed to happen is that most of the deliberation happens in the finance committee. And then when the financial orders come to the full council, they just pass and it's just like the vote and there's not actually any more deliberation. Um, so I do think that that again, not to be annoying, but I do feel like it's not functioning like a subcommittee. I think there could be, if we don't need to have a finance committee and the council wants to engage with finances as a committee of the whole, then I think it should just be a committee of the whole in the meeting. Otherwise, I think it should be a separated committee either before the meeting or on a separate date that is a subcommittee and mem other counselors only participate in the same way that other members of the public participate and could be recognized just as any other member of the public could be recognized in a committee meeting. But I don't think that if it wants to be a subcommittee, I think that then the other counselors shouldn't have special privileges to participate in the subcommittee that aren't given to the members of the public because it's a subcommittee. Mm -hmm. So that like, I, and I think there's like a choice here. Like if, if the whole council really thinks that the whole council should participate in the finance committee, then I think it's not a committee. Um, or it's saying we trust the members on the finance committee delegated with this authority to do their job. Um, Thank you, Member Baskin. I, um, I, because I think this conversation around the finance committee is kind of actually kind of helping with with the conversation around the scope. Um, you know, we can we can discuss it. I do want to stay, you know, um, on the you know I want to stay true to the agenda. And um, but I would say I guess I would look for one clarification in this conversation, which is. Um, is the, the downside to making all counselors part of the finance committee this idea that they're, I think what Solicitor Seawall was saying is that uh, it's too many people to do the granular deep dive. Because I'm just, I'm just trying to clarify, I'm not giving an opinion. I'm just trying to clarify what the con is. I mean, I suppose there's some slight silliness with us, you know, putting on another hat, all of us, and then going through kind of, you know, the, the kind of protocol of uh, recessing. But uh, I'd, I'd like to hear, I do want to move on, but I do like to hear uh, people speak to that point. Um, and then of course, any motions as well. Uh, member, well, I'm gonna say member Foster, member Baskin, and Laura, just to, because we cross-referenced, um, I, I may call on Councillor Labarge Correct, because you you did list it as both. Yes. Okay. Um, I was oh, as both. Can I speak? Can I speak on that subject about finance committee? Yes, that's what we're speaking of. Okay, thank yeah. you. I'm sorry, I'm late. I've been busy. Okay. Um, but anyways, we've always had a, a finance committee once a month, once a month, a separate finance committee meeting. And all of a sudden, it's changed. And we're doing it right at city council, just strictly a finance committee meeting, then make the recommendations that night to full city council. I really liked the idea before where we had a meeting once a month on the financial orders with the financial director and the executive, the mayor being there. And public could come in and listen to exactly about where this money is going, what it is all about. So things have changed and I really liked the way it was before with a finance committee meeting, which I take very, very serious with finance, that it should be actually separate, actually separate so that we can get the information that we need and we can ask the big questions right then and there and do the research. So then once we've, you know, done what we had to do on finance committee meeting, even if we had to have another meeting 
then it be that we have another meeting. And then it's send it off to city council um, of talking about the financial orders of exactly what was stated to us about the money and so forth like that. So that's about it. That's my feelings. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councilor LaBarge. Yeah. Yes, and uh, Councilor Foster and then Member Baskin. I think Member Baskin sort of phrased more eloquently than I could or did what my thinking around that was, is that the Finance Committee has been during this term acting not as a subcommittee, but rather as the full city councilor, full city council. And I don't think that that means we haven't been able to have granular discussions around financial orders. In fact, I think that the, I've noticed that every call, every councilor brings their own perspective and their own questioning style and their own sort of mark to these orders that, um, that not everybody does. And so, you know, as it being basically the full council, um, things are vetted. The way things have been vetted, I, I don't think the full council being present has made that challenging. In fact, I would say it's made the, the vetting of these orders significantly stronger. Um, member Basket. I just wanted to address your point. Um, the question of if every councilor was on the finance committee, I think that would be an open meeting law issue. I don't know, and I think Solicitor Seawall would know better, but I feel like there, we get into trouble when, and I mean, this is the question of, can the councilors participate in the subcommittees? Two is like, is there, what if their quorum are participating, but it's not a council meeting? I think, but that, I think the more elegant way to do that, if the full, if the full council wants to do this work, and I agree with Councilor Foster, I think that, the granularity has absolutely been present this term. Um, to me, it's the having only four people technically on the committee and having them vote on it when it's in the full council. It's It just feels like what's happening right now is there isn't functionally a finance committee. There's a finance committee in name only, and then the whole council deliberates financial orders, which get one sort of pro forma vote with four members and then two more votes, which is just so many votes and all of the same meeting a lot of the time like it's just it is overcomplicated. and so if if the council likes the way that it's currently working with all councillors discussing financial orders and doing the work of the finance committee i do think that that the path to that would be abolishing the finance committee putting that work in the council um and i don't think that would mean it would be less centered or less serious um, since I think the work is being done in a granular way. That said, I still do think with that, there is the problem of it's all happening in one meeting a lot of the time. And I personally think there's a value in, which is sort of what Council of the Barge was saying in separating it out. And I actually think that it seems like in the past, the executive has been able to plan and accommodate that with their financial orders. And so Again, I question the, does the urgency need to be that everything happens in one meeting? But it, it, yeah, but a lot of orders are really, they are perfunctory and they don't need to be discussed that much. And so I don't know, but I think that if, it, if it's gonna be in the meeting is the way it has been, I think it should just not be a committee and the whole council should just take on that work. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Dwight. The, um... Finance committee actually has two designated meetings per month, and usually the second one is postponed. Uh, it's just simply not, it's eliminated um, because the process has by default, and it's probably just as much the fault of COVID and meeting this way as anything else. So this speaks to Al's point. This is the exception. We are functioning within the exception. Three what? <laughs> it's but so the 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 fact is that this janky cobbled jerry rigged system that's working now does do some of the issues <clears throat> addresses the issues that karen had mentioned and that at the chair has mentioned as well but what were we you know i think to ezekiel's point and to al's point there's um uh, oh, that's right. There's two in the council meetings, and okay, one extra. The um, we 
if we want to provide opportunity for uh, more public access and discussion, and what we've done in the past, and what we've I mean, we've done under these circumstances, as there's something that needs greater thought and deliberation, for instance, the budget is huge. We've had we have multiple se separate budget hearings that are done under the aegis of finance, and then also under the aegis of, of the council. So, um, and there, are, and many of those hearing items that you see at the beginning are also budgetary discussions in some level, it deals with property. I actually, you know, I would entertain a motion to the effect that Al had recommended. We, we don't dictate times, at least in the rules, times and dates when meetings have to convene, principally because the members, we leave that to the members with the, the finding thing that works best. Um, but a separate meeting that would meet, if possible, before council, um, right before council would be just as fine. But um, to, we, you know, as I said, the challenging part is that everyone's first, um, the first time they lay eyes on any of these issues is in the, in the body of, a, of an agenda for a meeting that's occurring that 48 hours later that will be discussed and debated and voted on in many cases all at once. Um, there, I think the future council has to work out some relationship with the uh, executive to find ways to expedite, post, and present financial orders in a, in a manner that allows um, uh, earlier introduction to these items. Um, maybe if they're embedded, if, if they come up as, because part of the problem is, of course, as I said, the council meets twice a month and some, in finance and financial orders and things like that move a whole lot faster. On top of which, Massachusetts general law has lots of clocks that start ticking when certain things start are initiated, and the council meetings don't necessarily um, work that way. And in the past, part of the reason we got to this point is in the past, we've actually lost, we we actually failed to uh, follow through through a number of projects because the council was not convening in a timely fashion, and by law it failed. Um, and when it shouldn't have, and when, you know, I mean, the city didn't collapse, but it was not the best way to run a city by any stretch. So I think Al's solution is straightforward, clear. I, I would make a motion that we recommend a separate uh, established finance committee uh, that would convene separate from the council. And, um, at a time to be determined by the members. So a motion's been made, correct? Or, or is there a second? That was a motion, yes. Was, yes, okay. So it's by, uh, Vice Chair Simon, are you seconding this? I actually wanted to have some further discussion, so I'm not quite sure what to do here because- Well, if we, if we put the motion on the floor, we can discuss okay, the we'll motion. Discuss. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll I'll second that then. Okay. And Vice Chair Simon, would you like to just? Can I be recognized? I'm not really yes. sure how to raise my hand. I'm really apologizing. That's for okay. Just, in. just um just butt in. That's the only but, way you can. I'm I'm looking at the agenda. I'm looking for uh, deliberating over the finance committee and how the finance committee is going to meet, and I don't see it here. Am I missing something? Mm. Uh... Midi structure slash purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Council committees generally. We're talking about council committees generally. Yeah. Yes, we hope to move on to the other committees. That's Gen why. Generalities are made up of specifics, though. Okay. I, I, I'll put that out there just yeah. to, uh, um, if the chair. Alan, it's, that... but one of the bullet points is scope of committees work and how many assignments councils have. That's one committee structure and purpose. Um, okay. I mean, I mean, I, I think it comes under that, but you're right. It does not specify financial finance committee or any committee for that matter. So, um, it, we, if it could be interpreted by someone to look at the agenda as just a general discussion about committee assignments, in which case, then my I would withdraw my motion because it wouldn't be appropriate unless we actually made it specific. Um, but um, yeah, I would defer to the solicitor on that. 
I'm not seeing, you know, uh, that on the agenda. And, you know, I, I'm looking at this agenda, and if, if I were interested in this very specific way in which a specific committee was going to meet, um, being the Finance Committee, I wouldn't look at this agenda and say, okay, they're going to decide how the Finance Committee is going to meet. Uh, I don't know that this gives sufficient notice to someone who's specifically interested in that issue. Uh, I saw this as general, and I and you know I've been listening to this, thinking, okay, this is a a discussion around the finance committee because it is a, you know one committee that has always been problematic, and we're trying to figure out how to structure committees generally. And you know, if the rule were to be that no committee would be meeting within the you know, within the uh, city council meeting, except, you know, if there is a vote of the the council for specific need to have a committee meet during a council meeting. But I could see a general rule that committees do not meet during council meetings. So that would be, that right. would be within the scope of this agenda. Um, as the as the designer of the agenda, I will say the spirit of the of the agenda items was to encapsulate all uh, council committees okay. and unpack them that way. Yes, member signing. If you allow me, I'm going to withdraw oh, yeah. my motion. Okay. I'm going to withdraw the motion um, and uh, hope that this will become an agenda item for discussion and debate and motion. Okay. Uh, okay, so motion on the floor has been withdrawn. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. And Thank then you. member Baskin. First, let me add that I feel this question is entirely within the purview of the chairperson of the committee to decide. And I think the chairperson decided correctly that this, this is a matter that we can take up. But back to the issue at hand, I, I actually had a, a suggestion that might, it, it might address everything here. Um, so there was sometimes a need to have this discussion in the full council. I think we all agree that a lot of what the finance committee does is routine and perfunctory and doesn't need nine people looking at it and that that a finance committee of however many are capable of making decisions on a fifteen thousand dollar transfer from one department to another and bringing it to the full council for a vote but there are occasions where all nine people need to be in so so what about this so the rules currently say uh, for the finance committee the committee shall review all orders what if that was changed to may review and so would allow financial orders to go straight to the council in certain cases. Member Baskin. I was gonna say that I think the, um, the I'm thinking about that change. Um, I feel like they, they, I think they should all go to the committee. Cause I also think orders going to the committee doesn't mean the full council can't discuss them because then they'll go from the committee to the full council like all the other orders and ordinances and then they can get discussed by the full council and deliberated prior to being voted on. So I guess I don't see the problem with splitting finance off as a real committee and letting it do its work and then letting the whole council have their input sort of at the point in the process where they have that unless the full council wants to be involved in every financial order and just wants finance not to be a committee and to be the purview of the whole council. But I do think it like, I don't know, like I think that if, if it's the finance committee, it should just review all the financial orders, they should come to the council. Maybe the ones that are perfunctory can go in the consent agenda and ones that need discussion can go in the main agenda. Um, cause I also think a lot of financial orders could be handled in the consent agenda. I agree with, um, member Simon's point on that. I also think a real, a key thing, if we can change it and I don't, I haven't found it in the rules. So maybe it's just proceed sort of a, an expectation, but is the reading out loud of everything. I really think if we cut the reading out loud of everything, that also would be really helpful, um, to timeliness. I will, I plan to put that on uh, on future agendas. Um, um, Carolyn? Yes. 
That actually is not a rule that I can find. Is that established practice or is it a stat state statute? Because I would that's prefer to uh, I prefer to wait till I put it on the agenda, and it is it is one of the agenda items to discuss for reading aloud to deliberate on it and, and stick to what we have here. I don't uh, I don't think that's covered in our agenda today. Um, Councillor Foster, I think. The one, the one thing I want to be cautious of is not deciding up front whether a financial order or an agenda item is perfunctory or is going to merit further discussion. I know it has caught me by surprise. Um, this term, I can't think of any specific examples, and, and that's not germane to it anyway. But there are times when I look at an agenda item and I'm like, yeah, this is 30 seconds of discussion and we move on. And an hour and a half later, we're still there. Um, and so I wouldn't want either the city's executive to decide these are the eight perfunctory financial orders that I'm going to bring forth in a certain way or for any sort of preconceived notion to happen there. So just putting that out there that I, I, I do think they all, some of them are going to move very quickly, but I do think they all deserve, uh, you know, sort of an individual viewing. I'm going to chime in uh, and agree with Council Foster with some discomfort with, with making that dis distinction. And um, yeah, I, I'll just be um, upfront that I'm torn here because it sounds like we all kind of see that change is needed with how things are run now with the Finance Committee. And I'm of two minds because I, I, I appreciate uh, Vice Chair Simon's suggestion and, and, and others of separating it, that, that to me, I can see that working. I, but then, you know, I do struggle with the, with the um, purpose of the finance committee. If it is to give some specialized granular look, it's true that this, at least in my term, it, that it has been um, something that all counselors have wanted to, to, to delve into at that level. So I'm struck, those, that's my struggle. I see, I see two kind of solutions and I have, um, you know, I have some affinity with both. Yes, Councillor Dwight. Um, I, can I ask the chair, will this actually, uh, will this be put on a uh, future agenda for a vote relative to the Finance Committee? Specifically I was to, to the, uh, reading. No, no, I, I know, but I'm, I'm asking oh. if you would consider putting it on a future agenda, sure. if not the next one. And then sure. I would, uh, I, I also want to point out and reiterate this last term is the exception to which Al was referring. This is not this is not business as usual. So that's why, as we craft these rules, I want us to keep that in mind. We're, I mean, some things became very evident during the course of that, and and again, we're still not sure. We know for the remainder of this season, we voted to uh, continue uh, participating remotely. But the new council, as they as they come into play. Uh, it may be, it's more than likely going to be hybrid, um, but at the same time, some of the uh, problems that we're identifying will disappear or not be as critical as they appear now. So just, uh, yeah, so I just do we keep that in mind. I don't think uh, building uh, the rules based on, uh, in some cases, our own personal harrowing experiences over the last year and a half might not be the best way to proceed. Thank you, uh, Member Baskin. I'm just curious, can you clarify what, I recognize that this term has been exceptional for a number of reasons. Can you clarify what part of it relates to this? Like, I guess I'm, I'm curious what, what felt different about finance committee and how it met in previous terms that, yeah, that's my question. And I, can, am I presuming you're asking me? Yeah. yeah. The, um, I, I, was, I was speaking generically about our whole charge and not just specifically the finance committee. But the fact is that we are meeting exclusively within the context of the council meeting for finance because of the situation as it presented itself. And then also, um, whereas before, as I said, there were there is another scheduled finance committee that occurs during the week during the month uh, for uh, that's been canceled. 
So that would probably change and probably go back to, or could change. Um, it's not dictated by the rules, but we, we could, should have come to that. But again, that's, I would like to talk about that with that specifically identified within the agenda. So uh, as we move forward, but in the main, actually, the way we've conducted business in Toto is completely different in many respects. And that would speak more to the agenda item that we're, we're talking about, which is the other committees and the purposes of the committees and the value of those committees. Because, I mean, I, that, that's one of my bugbears, and I was hoping we would get to, get, get to uh, tickle that a little bit. So if there's uh, no motions... Uh, if there's no motion to be introduced and no objections, I will put the, the uh, member basket. I will make a motion um, that I move that no, we make a rule that committee meetings should not take place within the body of the council meeting, period. Um, and then we can decide later whether that means the finance committee no longer exists and is handled by the full council or meets separately, but I don't think committees should meet within the council meeting. Is there I'll second for purposes of discussion and then I have a comment. Okay. We sometimes it's critical to be able to have a meeting convene within the within the council meeting. Sometimes it's the only time we can do a special meeting if there is an emergency or, or uh, something that requires it. To eliminate it by the rules would be a mistake. I think we need that option. We need that option to have meetings uh, have an opportunity to, to convene within the council meeting if um, particularly as emergency responses or as problems present themselves and the committee's not able to meet for whatever reason, the only way they can convene is on a date specific. And if the council meeting happens to be the best time, that's a good way to go. And we've done that in the past. Other meetings, other committees have on occasion, depending on the issues as they arise, have convened within the council. So I, I I would be I would be opposed to banning it outright with a rule. Um, Vice Chair Simon, I actually want to offer a friendly amendment uh, amendment to Ezekiel, because I think all that really needs to be done is for if we want to make a recommendation at least to, to Ezekiel. And I agree with what you're trying to do here. I think all we need to do as it pertains to the rules that, that are currently written is remove a finance committee from the agendas for uh, the city council. Right now, it's written in the rules that it's in the agenda. It's an agenda item. If we remove that from the agenda, then it's no longer part of every meeting, but they can still choose to put something in there on occasion if they want to. So I would offer a friendly amendment to say basically that the motion is to remove the finance committee from the set agenda listed in the council rules. I accept that friendly amendment. And to clarify, I am still planning to put um, a specific recommendation about the structure of finance committee on a future agenda for this subcommittee. So this, yeah. Anyone else have a, yes. So for clarification, this is to move forward with a recommendation to remove finance committee from the main agenda of council meetings. Is that correct? Okay. That is correct. Technically, my second. To remove it from the order of business section of the rules. So there's a motion on the correct. floor, but we need to second this motion with the friendly amendment. Well, that 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 was that was that seconded was already, and I would I haven't withdrawn my second. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there are no more comments, um, roll call, uh, Laura. Okay. Yeah, I'm just confused. Did Councillor Dwight just say he withdrew his second? So there's no longer no. a second? No, I'm sorry. No, no, my, my second stands. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Councillor Mayori. Uh, yes. Member Simon. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. No. And Member Baskin. Yes. So uh, that passes with, with one no. Um, so looking at the agenda, you know, we have the other uh, subcommittees to talk about in terms of assignments, scope, structure, purpose, and participation. <laughs> yes, Councilor Dwight. In the past, and I've had problems with this, is that we've had committees that 
function as committees just for the sake of meeting and having committee. Um, whereas we've, um, and I think we, lo we lost sight of the value. Now, in many cases, they served as an educational function for some counselors who sat on the committee, um, having nonprofits come and describe their mission and so on and so forth. But the fact is, is we're not, we're not allowed, we're, we can't ask or insist or invite someone to come and make a presentation before the council uh, for anything. All we have authority over is what we're discussing in the council. And the subcommittees as we've identified here is the purpose of them is for deeper analysis on issues that we're voting on. And sometimes we have committees convening to discuss things that have no relevance to anything on the agenda. Maybe something that might come up later or something that actually would be devoted to um, special committees, select committees like this. Uh, when we did the downtown business analysis, there was no votes that we were taking on relative to that, but it gave us a deeper understanding about what that meant, but the committee disbanded after it existed. There's no reason to have a standing committee that does that. The, the committees in order to, sometimes committees historically have been set up just for the opportunity for members to have a committee on their, you know, on their resume or their letterhead or something. Not the best use or reason for the existence of a committee and not the best use of our time. And we are not, as I said, we can invite um, uh, people who come under the aegis of the executive, but inviting then we start to invite, um, I don't know, citizens or nonprofit agencies or things like that, that don't work for the city, have no contracts with the city. Um, I start to, I think that that's, that's always made me feel very uncomfortable. I think the, the nonprofits have appreciated it because they, they think that somehow it's provided them a recognition that they need. Um, and unfortunately, a promise is more than it delivers. It only telling two or three counselors what the hell's going on uh, who are spending two hours listening to them explain their mission. And they're all great. They're all brilliant. But the fact is, is that there's nothing that we vote on that has anything to do with them. And I, I, I want the committees to, you know, legislative matters um, is, that's a critical committee. I think uh, energy and sustainability, which is not a council committee. Uh, the youth commission, of course, as I told you, is, is one of the trickier anomalies that we have to figure out just what the hell that is, because it's a whole different creature that has, it's called the mayor's youth commission, but the, the youth commission works with the council. And there's a council liaison on it, so it it it's part of an assignment. So these are the things I think I would like to clarify. I would like us to have a better sense of um, what meetings provide the value that we need. That's actually been described in our discussion about finance, among others. What are the ones that actually have uh, deep, real relevance, as opposed to uh, committees that are meeting for the sake of meeting? Uh, member Simon, I mean, Vice Chair Simon. Um, so this is a topic I've thought a little bit about because I, I, as I look at the way things operate, I always wondered why every committee was meeting every month that I had trouble based on my own experience as an elected understanding that there was business for every committee to do every single month. There is nothing in the rules about how often committees meet. They, you either get a referral and then you got to set, and then you have a timeline that, that starts or the chair of the, of the committee can, can set up meetings as, as necessary. So it, it did seem to me that there could be a lot fewer meetings with absolutely no harm whatsoever to anybody. Um, if people operated just under the, the knowledge that the rules are that the, the chair can set up a, a meeting or you get a referral and you have to do something within a certain amount of time. If it did that, I bet you, I bet you'd cut half the committee meetings out, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's, it's if if they don't need to meet, then you're wasting people's time. Um, so uh, that those are my comments. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, member basket. 
I agree with Vice Chair Simon's comments. I think the committees should meet when they have business and not meet when they don't have business. Um, and I think that the, I'm not really certain of the function of community resources specifically. It feels very nebulous to me. Um, the speaking to what sort of Councilor Dwight was saying about having hearings with local nonprofits to hear about them, that seems to happen in community resources. Um, I don't, I'm not certain what exactly community resources purpose is. Legislative matters, the purpose seems clear. It should only meet when there is legislation for it to discuss, which I think it, it does get canceled when, although I would like the shift from a scheduled meeting that gets canceled to scheduling a meeting when it's necessary. That might be a useful mental shift um, in how to think about these things. And then city services, seems mostly to exist to review all the appointments that then go into the consent agenda. I think multiple of you serve on city services. I'm really curious about that process. I haven't been, um, but the, do, are those appointments ever rejected by the council? I've never heard them discussed in full council. Um, it, when they are rejected, are they rejected in city services? Um, I, I would be curious to know about that vetting. Is it is it pro forma or is there, because we're required to do it by the charter maybe, or is it, um, is there serious vetting? Are our appointments, do appointments not happen because of that? Because um, I haven't ever heard that come up in council. They've always passed in the consent agenda or separated out with someone at a conflict. All right, Councilor Dwight. It is very rare, um, principally because anyone willing to volunteer for any committee and, uh, you know, should not be told that you, you're not worthy. But on occasion, there are people, you know, for instance, the license commission is the one that tends to be the most controversial by state law. You have to have one Republican, one Democrat, one independent uh, appointed, right? Which is, yeah, the, the, the rather bizarre liquor laws of the state of Massachusetts. But the fact is, is that, that there have been controversial uh, um, uh, assignments to that that have met with resistance and uh, have been parsed out and there's been fights on the floor but it's it's it is that's the rare exception um that's why they're embedded in the consent agenda for the most part is you you want to honor the people willing to work for the city in in this volunteer capacity and unless the person actually presents as a problematic threat to the perception of the council um then they will be they're usually allowed and that's that's where that's the so that's the committee of the mary answers on that's the what their job is to do is to interview i mean and you'll notice many of the ones that we've done are reappointments that people willing to continue um there actually is a shortage we have lots of openings that still remain empty but they are interviewed, they discuss, and then they also have to write in their application, their desire and purpose and their qualifications for the position. Um, and we live in a community that's blessed with uh, remarkable talent. And I, so I think that committee, while not very sexy, actually has a value and a purpose um, because there will be the occasion that there might be something that needs to be uh, needs to have a place where it can be discussed and debated. Because also remember, you're talking about individuals who are not elected officials and you know, you're, you're, you could defame them in some way that would be uh, insulting unless there's, there's an open public debate and discussion about it. So that community resources is, is community resources evolved over time. Um, once upon a time, it basically became an amalgam of five different committees that existed in the council, including Veterans Affairs, among other things. Um, uh, we don't do Veterans Affairs anymore. We don't do any number of things. And I think members of the community resources would argue, and, and I think rightfully so, that they're, um, they're just another bite of the apple. For particular issues, and you know, you pointed out that they they did uh, they were, they were very helpful in the discussion and the advancement and the and the analysis and education relative to the plastic ban. Um, but the fact is that could be done in another committee, arguably. 
Um, it could also be done by individual counselors as well. But it does it does provide a, an opportunity for a fuller discussion. But the fact is that there are a number of other items, another other items that aren't relevant. But when departments, and this is a budgetary issue, and I don't know, uh, fire, uh, police, um, <clears throat> dispatch, DPW, central services, they come periodically and make presentations that are relative to um, discussions that would be financial orders. Or, be, or discussing their budget as we go. But there's ways to, to do that more effectively than what we're doing now. Um, and because we don't make decisions about what type of bandages are stocked in an ambulance, that, that's stupid. If we put it on us, that would be a terrible idea. We don't make decisions that have any bearing on the DPW other than how, how their budget is, works. <clears throat> and so, I, I would think that, that w there is a way to create committees that convene, as you said, by, by appointment, essentially, as opposed to being dictated, because at that point, there's a sense of obligation to fill the meeting up with something. And that, I take Al's point, that wastes a lot of people's time. <laughs> and on the other side, sends a false message to the people who are participating that there's some value to this when point in fact it's as nutritious as a Twinkie ultimately. There is no nutritional value. It's, it, it confers upon them some sense that they are seen and understood. And that's not necessarily true. And that's unfair also. That's an unfair uh, message to project. I'm recognizing Councilor Labarge. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Councilor Dwight. Um, the Committee on City Service, I feel is very, very important, very important. It is an honor to be able to call an applicant and talk with them of the reasons why they wanna be on a committee. And you learn a lot by interviewing them of what they feel they can do to make changes on a committee, what they would like to see in that. And I'm very honored to be able to hear that. And, you know, we need to look at the hours that volunteers are putting in. They're putting in a lot of hours. You got the um, Human Rights Commission, very active, very, very active. And um, the energy subcommittee that we have, there's a lot of committees. So. I feel it is of importance when the mayor does a recommendation to come to full city council to send it to city service for the interviewing process. I myself for all the years only saw one episode of where we had a counselor who wanted to vote down one individual and that didn't happen. Okay, because there was reasons going on there and that person was accepted by full city council. So I have to say that it's very honorable to be able to talk with volunteers, people that I've not known, but was able to directly talk with them. And I think that's the value there of what they do and the changes and they wanna be part of the community. Also too, it is our charge for department heads to bring them in and get follow-ups from them. And I think that's very, very critical. Do I miss city service and veterans affairs? Yes, I do. Because now we have community resource. To me, I would be hopping bringing in agencies, I'll tell you right now, because I think it's valuable no matter what agency it is to know about them. What did they do on the outside? And we don't have that anymore. Um, city service because we cannot allow it in our committee, but I wish we could open the doors and bring in certain agencies that I feel that are critical for part of being part of our city. So that's my reasons of committee on city service. I think it's critical, but I'd like to see it advance somehow of going in a different direction. And I think it's not gonna happen the way it's written on here. That's it, thank you. I wanted to weigh in and just, just uh, um, 
going off uh, what Council Labarge was saying, I, I hear, I mean, part of the issue with the subcommittees is the limitation of power. And, and so, you know, city services being a good example, what we can actually impact on the, the services that the city officially provides. Um, so the main, the main purpose of that particular committee is to, seems to be to, you know, review these appointments. Uh, and I don't know if community resources and city services could be a, a combined or if that would actually save anyone any time. But I, I would like to take a moment to um, kind of think outside the box a little with these. And, and we can identify the work that needs to be done and say it's important work, but then maybe do the thought experiment of Im imagining what else that could look at like. Um, one thought I've had as someone who serves on city services is the urge to want to almost be like a sponsor to a, appointees. And I've said to them, you know, if in a year you're having issues or there are obstacles arise to you serving, please call me. And I've done that informally because we do have a retention issue. But I have thought, you know, could this be a situation where there's not a committee, but each counselor has a certain amount of appointees that they vet or sponsor or um, I, it's not really a complete thought, but I was wanted to put that out there as we continue this conversation. Um, Councilor Foster. Um, Councilor Mayori, I love where you're going with that. And I, I would suggest that that maybe goes on the agenda for a future meeting. So, cause I would love some time to, to think on that. Um, okay. but that's, that's one of the things I'm most excited about with city services is that opportunity to sort of be, um, Kind of a liaison between people who are serving on city boards and commissions and city government um, in general when i call an appointee to talk with them about their appointment i mean at, at ezekiel you, you rightly noted it's it's relatively perfunctory um you know it, it it would it would take a lot like a whole lot to stand up and and reject somebody's appointment um but that being said when i talk with people they're they're uniformly um, pleased that a city councilor has called them, and I do similar to what Councilor Mayori said, where I talk to them, I, I talk through the process and what it means, and offer to be of assistance. Um, and it, it, there, I think there is a greater opportunity for um, kind of. Uh, uh, I think there's there could there's potential for city services to take on more than than the committee is. Um, and so that's, that's one I definitely would love to think about. Community resources, I kind of like the um, suggestion around maybe changing it in our minds from we meet at a certain time to meeting when there's a referral. And, you know, the plastic ordinance is just one example where legislative matters was looking at that ordinance from the legislative viewpoint, which was their charge. But community resources was looking at that ordinance through a different lens that I think added an awful lot of value to that ordinance. And um, you know, I, I I have another one. I have some thoughts of ordinances that will likely be introduced where I think a community resources type perspective is going to bring value outside of what the legislative matters perspective is. And so I I, I think there's value there, but it doesn't. And we've had, we've had, we certainly have had many months go, go where we haven't met when we haven't had something, but perhaps a reframing of meeting when an ordinance or other topic is referred um, rather than a standing meeting schedule is one that, that certainly makes quite a bit of sense to me on that one. Um, Vice Chair Simon. I do want to just add that uh, nothing has to change for committees to operate that way. Um, because the rules are silent about it. Although it may be helpful to make a recommendation uh, to the rules to say that the committees will meet upon referral by the city council or at the call of the chair. And so it's specifically that way. Um, but that specifically excludes automatic monthly meetings. Uh, but I'm not prepared to make that motion. I do, I do need to, I, I wanna ask though about this process of talking to appointees because uh, multiple people have said you call these people um and am i to understand that the interviews with appointees do not occur in a public meeting right really there's not a quorum of counselors 
So we report on our conversation to the meeting, that's, but the the meeting itself doesn't involve a, a, a quorum of counselors. That's what seemed to me to be extremely problematic. Oh. Um, huh. I, I'm surprised. We meet surprised uh, together uh, when we, oh, my internet's going, oops. I would, um, well, let me, I'll just finish what I was saying, which is that we meet, um, we, we, when we interview a department head candidate, then, then that's a situation where they come to the meeting and, and the entire committee, uh, city services committee, if, um, you know, ask questions. But appointees, we call and visually report back. Member Baskin, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I mean, I'm really, I'm, I'm curious about that process as well. Um, just, so what do you, I guess that doesn't, I'm not certain of what, then what does the committee do? Like you report back, you're like, I had a good interview with this person. And then the rest of the committee is like, oh, good. And then referred positively. Is that sort of the tenor of it? Like, I guess my question is like, that doesn't. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I, I will say, you know, uh, as someone who serves on city services during the, the, pol the, the debate around policing and the police budget and uh, the formation of the Policing Review Commission, to have city services not play a role in that didn't feel right. And I don't know what what I was looking for, but I do think we should, we, we need to, I think Council of Bar just, I, I think that we need to really revisit what, you know, if we're not going to be uh, vetting city services on some level and um, in some relevant way, and it's just about the appointees, and I, I think we should consider just other options for how to handle the appointees. Yeah, Member Baskin. Yeah, I mean, that strikes me that city services is currently functioning as the Committee on Appointments not the Committee on Civil City Services. Right. And that seems odd. I mean, it. so do city services, did city services not have the power? Could city services do something like say, we're curious about what's going on with policing. We'd like to invite the police chief to our meeting to answer questions about how the police department functions. Do city services yeah. have the authority to do that? Well, correct, we do. We have to submit, um, questions ahead of time to the mayor's office and have them approved it and um but we do have that council Labarge, would you as the chair would you like to add anything to that yes uh, council Miori yeah. is correct about that once a month when we meet like we've had a tremendous amount of appointments a lot of reappointments and what we do once a month is make a decision who we want to bring in as far as a department head. So all four of us talk and think about who we'd like to bring in. That decision is made at the meeting. For the next prior meeting, we tell them to think about who they would like to bring in. So right now we did talk about bringing in Chief Jody Casper and we felt that because of it at the end of summer, it probably was not a good time to do that, but she will be coming in. What really bothers me is that, which I'm very un uncomfortable with, where as city councilors, when we want a department head to come in, we have to go ahead and submit questions to the mayor the questions that we're going to be asking a department head. And I am very, very uncomfortable with that because I feel as city councilors, we're the legislative part of the body, we have power too. So we have to send them in good deal, good respect to the executive branch of the questions that we are submitting into a department head for them to at least be prepared for the questions that they have. Well, that's okay, we do that, but I'm uncomfortable with that because I just feel that we should be able to ask what we would like to ask from them. And I feel that power is taken away, taken away, and I'm not happy with it. I'm gonna be honest about that. Right. And um, just to clarify, to, to remember, uh, member Simon Baskin, it, it, to, to Councillor Dwight's point, 
when we do that, for example, at city services, we bring in, we brought in animal control, we discuss it, that information doesn't get the full council. So if the Councilor Dwight's point, you know, if the function of a subcommittee is to, to be doing kind of some granular work to bring the full council, it doesn't necessarily happen. Um, yeah, uh, Member Baskin and then Vice Chairs. And I think Solicitor Seawald had something. I, I just wanted to point out, if I may, uh, to uh, Councilor Barge's point, that requirement is in the charter, and that's not something that can be changed by rule. I just want to be clear about that. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's the city council who has the power, not city council committees. It's the city council that has the power to uh, request on seven days' notice that a person from the administration appear before it. So. Uh, that's the way the charter is written. It's in Section 2-7D, just in case anybody's interested. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Solicitor. Um, Member Baskin and then Vice Chair Simon. I mean, if the if the council committees don't have power, can't the isn't the point of a committee? It's delegated power by the council. So I I don't understand that. Like it doesn't. I I I guess I don't know what the point of the this function of city services is to call, it's not even allowed to call in these heads. It just, it feels very like silly to me. I'm sorry, that's the word that comes to my mind. Like it, I, I, I don't understand. And I know if it's in the charter, it's not in our scope, but it just like, mm, so the, yeah, I don't, I don't see then why it's city services. And I guess then, yeah, I wanna hear what member Simon has to say. Guys, that's not, it's not in the charter. Okay, I'm gonna to read to you section 2-7B. That's right. Information requests. The city council may require a member of an appointed multi-member body or a city employee appear before the city council to give any information that the city council may require in relation to the municipal services, functions, powers, or duties which are within the scope of the responsibility of that person and not within the jurisdiction of the school committee, period. The next okay. section is okay. mayor. If you are asking the mayor for information, you must put it in writing and adhere to time limits. There's no such clause for information requests of a city employee. Subsection D. Oh, there is another section. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. You, I, I, if I spoke in, in, uh, imperceptibly, it was D. I'm correct. No, yeah. you're, you're, you're correct. I'm corrected. Okay. Um, Councilor Dwight. Thank okay. Well, <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up because actually that, that is, and essentially as silly as it seems, that is the division of power and that's how it's laid out. The other point is, is that, um, and it is frustrating, but to have the, because the council also has the authority to request to have department heads come before the council, not before a committee that stands. The committee didn't exist when the charter was written. Um, the committee is to serve, to do what we, we ask, to talk about things that are directly relevant to an agenda that we're deliberating. Um, not to inform three counselors about or four counselors about any particular thing exclusively, because that's hopefully information that they would have the opportunity to share with the other council when we're talking about an issue. But one point in fact, it doesn't, it doesn't have any relevance. It's not germane. The committee is not doing what it should be doing. Um, it's just meeting. It's just meeting or providing an opportunity for, in some cases, grandstanding. And it is not it is not governing, and it doesn't allow for it functions more as an investigative committee, which is something that's completely different. We establish that as the council. They are not you're, the the subcommittees are not freestanding investigative committees. Only insofar as they investigate ordinances and laws that come before them, uh, that are referred to them by the council. And a lot of times, if you look at a lot of the subcommittee's agendas, has nothing to do with the, what the council is debating. Has nothing it was never referred to by the council. The um, the appointments are critical, actually. <laughs> so far as I, I Council Labarge made a compelling case about that, 
Um, it is, it, and while they, I, uh, by and large, the, I mean, part of the value there is also conferring some at least august nature to it to the people who are volunteering. You know, if you don't hear from a counselor and if it just suddenly you get a notice from somebody, oh, by the way, you were approved last night, thanks a lot. Um, that's that we used to require, part of the problem was we used to require every applicant to come to the council meeting. It didn't go to a subcommittee meeting. They had to come to a council meeting. And those poor people had to sit in those horrible chairs for hours and hours only to find that we were going to just vote them in anyway. And then they would stand up and wait. And that that's cruel. And we decided that was cruel. And that's why it got it, it got embedded in a, in, a, in a subcommittee to at least expedite the work. But the the rest of the stuff, you know, it's incumbent upon us to become educated as individual counselors on very on all the issues that come before city services or come before community resources and or even for legislative matter of the planning board and anything else. Um, that's on us. And um, to create a committee to actually pr basically provide an opportunity for dog and pony shows is not fair and not right and not it doesn't function as a subcommittee. Uh, Council Labarge and Member Baskin, and I just want to say that we have 15 minutes to my goal. I, I, I'm not, it's not a hard end to eight, just to keep it in mind. And I would say, you know, maybe 10 more minutes on committees and council committees, and I'm certainly willing to put any follow up on a, 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 another agenda. And maybe, and then we will, we can have a little time to touch upon our, our uh, last couple of agenda items. And again, if they take to, if it goes on too long, I can uh, put those on a, a future agenda. Uh, Council Labarge. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, also, too, I think a lot of value. I mean, even looking in the charter right now, and Attorney Seawall saying to Alan Sack, Simon, in regards to number two there, that's okay. We can always look at doing a charter change. To me, that's where it's at, of doing a charter change. And right now, there's a couple of things that I feel we need to do a charter change on. And we could do an ordinance on it at some point next year to change the language. Point of so, order, this is not on the agenda. I think we got to be careful. That okay. charter discussion is not on the agenda at this point. I want us to be, you know, pay attention to what we're doing here and be careful not to speak that for Okay, well, right. I will say that she's relating it to the scope of uh, committee work. Exactly. So I, I actually do think this is relevant. Um, yes. Right, because Anything Al Simon talked before? about it, so. Right. Al's so the problem then. <laughs> <laughs> Never Baskin. <laughs> I'm glad not to be the problem at this moment. Well, um, I, have, I have a hat you have to wear when you're the right. problem. It's very <laughs> tone. Yes, Member Baskin. So um, I, I like this. So I think we have the function already for more agile adept committees and that's select committees because they're mm -hmm. focused, they're purposeful, they are limited term, they don't need to exist forever in perpetuity. I would like it if there were less committees, less standing committees, which would create more room and space for subcommittees. I also think the standing committees, the meeting, I agree. I think there's a way to word it in the rules as member Simon said, but I also think a lot of these issues are cultural rather than rules-based. Like it's the committees meet because they've always met or something, or we read things into the record because we read things into the record, but they don't necessarily need to be rules changes. They could just be changes how we how the council conducts themselves. And that doesn't have to be a rule. So that is also something I think the council could endeavor to be more flexible in reconsidering how it functions and what sort of pomp and circumstance is useful and what isn't um, on a more regular basis. So that would be something I'd be interested in as a member of the public. Um, I think in terms of the, the literal committees, it does seem like there's a, a critical function to city services, um, whether or not it should be called city services or not. Um, I think that the, the review of appointments seems to be critical and it seems better handled there than in the full council. Legislative matters is purposeful. Finance may or may not continue to exist. It could become a committee of the whole. Um, and then I would, 
I make a motion to remove the Committee on Community Resources from the standing committees. Uh, uh, Councilor Dwight. If I may, I, I, I think it's a little premature to make recommendations. That's all. I think I, I what I was hoping was that we would discuss each committee and what it does and to remove or modify it piecemeal. I think, you know, we were, the idea was to discuss them collectively and see what best serves the council rather than I think it were we're looking through the microscope incorrectly or looking through the distance lens. So I, I, it, it would be my preference that we continue to address the other items on the agenda motions like that. I would, I would certainly entertain. I don't disagree with it. It's just saying I, I would entertain a more, uh, a, a broader discussion about committees in and of themselves and their purpose and value. I can remove that motion for now, but I, okay. I think it, I'll withdraw the motion. Um, but I, I like. I think of the committees in my current thinking, that could be a committee we could not have and it might free up more space for select committees on the kinds of things that are within the scope of community resources, but in a more focused and useful way, rather than a standing committee that lacks focus. Its scope is so broad. The economic development, local business, tourism, the environment, the arts, planning, zoning, sustainability, <laughs> land use, housing, and affordability, That that's, that's a lot of things. And so I think it lacks cohesion because of that. Right. Um, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, I was actually going probably to suggest in the in when we got to this motion or along this line of a merging of the two as opposed to elimination of one. So uh, maybe even coming up with a, a committee for everything else <laughs> that covers whatever's left. But um, I actually wanted to introduce uh, into the discussion since we're running out of time, uh, one of the suggestions that I made in that memo that I sent to the committee, which was to reduce the number of committee members from four to three um, to just to have odd number to uh, um, have ease and um, uh, with. Uh, Councillor Foster. Uh, Vice Chair Simon, I, I saw that and I, I liked your thinking on it, especially as we're looking at how can we streamline more things. But then multiple times in this term, councillors on a committee have had a conflict and haven't been able to part to participate in discussions. And so when that happens, then we'd be if if that were to happen on a committee of three, we'd be down to two councillors able to participate, whereas when it happens on a committee of four, then there's three who are still able to participate. So I was, I, I liked the line that was going and then down to a practical matter, um, that that's something we would need to address. If, can I just answer? Because sure. obviously, I mean, two's a quorum, you can still function, but I, but if you can't get all your members there, I, I assume you're talking about a last minute cancellation and not a meeting is set up and then I, I, I can't meet on that date. Well, you have to meet when everybody's available. I mean, a conflict of interest. Not a, not a scheduling conflict, but a conflict of interest. You mean they can't, they cannot participate in the meeting? Exactly. If you have a, con a right. conflict of interest, you can't participate in a meeting or a discussion. And so then that would leave a, a committee with only two counselors. It's pretty lonely being on the Waste Subcommittee of NASC without um, Councilor Garrett. <laughs> does, that happen, does that happen frequently? Um, Councilor Dwight? Are you well, NESC is is an exception yeah. because that's yeah. not a council committee. So, True. but the um, yeah, you know what? You know why there's four? It was to evenly divide and make it easier for a council president to try and set the Thanksgiving table. But to Council Foster's issue is true. There will be a point in which someone occasionally is going to come up that someone's going to have to recuse. If two people have to recuse, the committee is not a functional committee at that point, and basically it'll have to come back to the council. The, um, the, yeah, it was back to that old dispersal. Everyone wants a certain amount of committees and they fight for committees and who you, who gets the beefier committees and who gets the not so beefy committees. And that as a council president, that was the worst experience I had to deal with, unlike what Councilor Sharis had to deal with. I had to, was assignments for councilors who got gravely offended by being excluded from certain committees or not, or being included in certain committees. 
and it was it was brutal. And in fact, actually predating me as council president, um, we had uh, one counselor <laughs> threatened to quit the council and leave the state of Massachusetts, which of course everyone said, well, it's Dia, but um, they didn't. But the fact is, is that's, that's the reason, and it's not a good reason, um, making, but he does present quorum conflict issues uh, more readily when you have three, because obviously two people cannot talk to each other at any given point. That would be considered uh, at least about any issue that that will have a chance to come before them, because that's a built-in um, violation of open meeting law. Mm -hmm. There's the rub. But the fact is, is that um, you know, with four, it's not much better. It's the the problems still present themselves. But that's that's essentially it. The reason uh, it was one to accommodate every counselor and two to have some sensitivity about um, quorum open meeting law violation. So I'm thinking that uh, you know I'm going to be putting kind of refining and voting on specific recommendations around council committees on a future agendas. Is that sit well with uh, folks since our time is? Thinking in here. I don't want to shut down any motions. If someone, of course, you're free to make motions, but it's, it seems like there's um, it's a great start. And then perhaps we'll put um, kind of more uh, refining, refining our thoughts through a vote on and recommendations at another agenda. Unless any, okay. Um, let me, I'm just looking at this. So we have. So I, I promise to do so. If everyone's comfortable with that, we can move on to the other modes of integrating public participation. Yeah, so Laura, would you, um, you found this, this baby. Would you like to? Right, I, yeah, you know, I just- Do you have any comment to make about that since it was your- um, I mean, I just put it on the agenda because um, Member Baskin had been interested in speaking about sure. some of the methods of public participation, but then I happened to right. come across that when I was on the Amherst government website for another purpose. So I just thought I'd put it on there for informational purposes. Um, that, you know, that's something that Amherst Town Council does do. They schedule public forums um, where there is, it is possible to have a dialogue between counselors and members of the public and, I guess they do it when they detect that there's you no know, additional participation or impact what called for. So I, I think I, I, I don't know if you're really interested in reading the actual portion of their rules, but I, you know, that's a, a link on the agenda. Right. And uh, I, I want to point out to Member Baskin, especially that, you know, I hadn't thought of it. We, we could reach out to someone on the Amherst Council and invite them to our select committee if we felt like that was something that would be useful to delve into more of, uh, around this. But if not, we can just discuss it um, here. Did anyone have any thoughts on it? Um, Councilor Dwight. Technically that's possible anyway. We can do that. We can actually Convene a forum as long as the, 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 the difficulty has always been if there's a, a quorum of the council, you have to identify it as a council meeting. And as such, then conforms to council rules. I also think it sets up what I've often invited, um, for instance, well, let's see. There was, um, back when the Occupy movement was hot, there we, the council was occupied. The chambers got occupied. But the problem was we couldn't have a conversation. They wanted a conversation with a human microphone in a room the size of most of our bedrooms. You can imagine what that was like. And it wasn't particularly productive. But what I had asked was that they convene a meeting that we could attend, that we would attend as equals, that we would participate in the conversation. And it worked out. There were breakout groups. They they, of course, didn't write any flyers in Spanish and didn't leaflet uh, Lawrence Heights or Hampshire Heights. So there was a large body of the population that we're talking about without. But the fact is that that's, that was very effective, but it was not something the council can do. Now, Amherst actually has a different structure of government than us. They came closer with their most recent charter change, but they still have a town manager who's hired, who's not an elected official. 
um, the mayor in Northampton is elected by the population. Thereby their power is given and granted by the population as opposed to the town manager is hired by contract and the council has the authority over the mayor. So the dynamic's a little different and it's, but it's worth investigating um, or even embedding in the rules of um, some type of vehicle that would allow for that opportunity. And I think it would take some conversation with the solicitor, of course, to figure out what's the way that it can be done so that it conforms and comports with law. And, you know, I have no objection to, I think it's a good idea. So, but as I said, we can more or less do that now when we have in, in our wards or whatever. So, but I, I, like, I like the notion, I think it's good. Councilor Dwight, when you say we can do it now, do you mean all councilors could go to such a meeting? Yeah, as long as we don't convene it and we don't, we are not deliberating something that we would share, but I, if that gets tricky. It really does get tricky. I mean, um, there are events that we all, you know, uh, the, for, the performance formally called trans performance, if we all showed up at that, right? Technically, as long as we're not talking about anything that has any direct relevance to something we vote on, that's okay. We don't have to announce trans performance as a, as a, um, a, a city council meeting. And, yeah. and as I said, Northampton, I think is exclusive when we do that. And that's because of conversations that I had with the attorney general's office multiple times over the years about how do you, how do you account for these, op, these situations that would present as a, a violation of quorum and open meeting law. And they simply said, we don't have an answer. You have to err on the side of caution. And we suggest that you just sort of convene them all as councilmen, which is obviously absurd. We've been doing that and it's absurd, but that's because they really have not come up, come up with a reasonable answer. So it's on us to try and figure out, you know, in good conscience, try to, in good conscience, trying to figure out the spirit of the law and abide by that. Mm. That's the that's best we bad, can hope for. Yeah, that's some bad parenting. There's rules, but we, we won't tell you, we only tell you when you right. <laughs> break them. Right. But we you, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, any more comments on um, this model from Amherst? Or is there an action item? Yes, member Baskin. I don't have an action item, but I like, I do like this idea. I think it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think that it, it would be great if we could sculpt something where all members of council could talk to the public without violating open meeting law. Hmm. And they could discuss together. That would be interesting to me. I also think another thing I'm curious about in this idea of other modes of integrating public participation is the like the process of when individuals are recognized, which feels like a little fuzzy to me right now. Um, sometimes the chair recognizes people what there has to be a vote of the full council, but in committees, there doesn't necessarily need to be a vote. That I'm, I don't see really any rules about that, um, but I it might be useful to make some rules about how the council recognizes members of the public. Um, it's another way that the council can integrate public participation because they can recognize someone to speak. Right, maybe we should task uh, Solicitor Seawald with, um, well, let me go ahead, Councilor Foster, I didn't see your hand. Oh, that, that's okay. It's uh, similar to Member Baskin. I don't have like an action item or a recommendation yet, but something that, that very much struck me was um, the Policing Review Commission's set up um, on some of their public forums where rather than people just had a strict time limit for speaking, they could use their time either just to share their thoughts or to request a response from the commission members. And there were times that that, that ended up, you know, being, uh, I think, very valuable. And, and uh, you know, for, in a member of a meeting of the full council, I think we would certainly need to consider time and all of those things because they would allow seven minutes, but then you did have this back and forth that member Baskin is talking about. And so that just may be the type of structure that, that 
could be added in, whether it's a, a public hearing or um, you know, certain opportune times for the council to consider something like that. Uh, Vice Chair Simon. Um, I guess the the where I the position I start from is that the uh, the regular city council meetings is not the place for this. Um, I think that's a business meeting. It should be seen as a business meeting. Um, but but if there's a desire for something more uh, um, integrative, uh, that another form another form take place to do that, whether it's before a council meeting or, or a separate meeting or something that is different than the business meeting of the city council. And I would like clarification, I, I assume I, from Solicitor Seawald on what that looks like, because I, I don't think, it's not clear to me what that looks like if we meet in that, for, that, that manner. Um, so maybe that is one, I, um, action item is to kind of clarify how to do so. And I felt like there was another, something else Member Baskin said that I wanted clarified. Oh, um, recognizing um, members of the public. So maybe that's something we can just uh, task the solicitor with to, to weigh in on. And uh, uh, solicitor, you could weigh in by email or, you know, I'm not sure if you have that, those answers, but we can, or another meeting if you do you need to think about those answers i'd be happy to do that uh, i can either email or uh, you know I, I assume that i'll be back before the next meeting and i'll actually have you know internet service that i can depend on yeah well that's good yeah, it, 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 pretty late in the meeting and i want to wrap up so but i i'd like to that's something we can explore and so solicitor see while we'll We'll get that back to us as a framework for the conversation, and of course, I can, I can also put um, further discussion on this on the, another agenda. Uh, so, if no one else has any comments, I let's just talk about regular meeting, uh, our regular meeting schedule. Laura, I did finally do the doodle poll today. I think right. yesterday. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know if you got answers for everyone about the. Doodle. You know, I'm so unfamiliar with Doodle Poll that I, I assumed it would email me if somebody responded to my poll. Yeah. Apparently it doesn't because I didn't oh. know you responded. So I just thought no one responded. Oh, interesting. Okay, Member Paskin, do you have some insight? This is, this is only administrative, but um, it I was a, sort of confused about the way the Doodle Poll was set up because the only, I feel like usually when I've used Doodle, it's like there's a wide range of options and then you select which ones you wanted. Um, versus, but I, I liked the suggestion of every other Tuesday at that time. That works for me. Um, so that, that would be a good standing meeting time. And yeah. Right. How does that uh, fit for everyone else? That, that works for me. All right. So let's see. That would put the next meeting. Got my calendar up. Well, it was second and fourth Tuesday, not every other Tuesday. Yeah, that was second and fourth. Okay. Sorry, I stand corrected. It's okay. So I think it was the 14th and the 28th of September. Let me take a look at the calendar. Yes, those were the would be the next two. And I, it seems like a long time. But yeah, I guess. Hmm. How, how do people feel about that? September 14th, our next meeting. I want to get to regularity, but I'm really anxious to get as many meetings as we can because I really feel like we need to start um, wrapping up around the hall, you know, around Thanksgiving and the holidays to have time to bring it to full council. Madam Chair? Yes. I personally am, am willing to schedule another meeting before we get to a regular second and fourth. Uh, if people want to do that, I'm fine with that. I, I mean, that would be. That's my instinct to, to try to get one more in before we, uh, but if, if that's too much for anyone, um, that's okay too. Anyone have that? So that would be, I guess, let's look at a date. If we did that, let's see, now I've confused myself. So 14th was going to be the second, the first of the, so that would be um, next Tuesday or the one after. So we, how's, so September 7th, and then the 14th, and then go go to to you know to a month. 
How's that feel? Um, yes, Council Foster. Uh, I, Council. I was gonna say, I really, really want to say yes, but with school starting, yeah, next, like I'm feeling, I don't, I don't know, Laura. Yeah, yeah. September seventh is Rosh Hashanah. Ah. Uh, Gotcha. That's right. I had a feeling when I said that it felt wrong and it was because we had moved to, we moved to mother meeting. Yeah, let's see. Um, so, so Council Foster, you prefer to just start with the 14th and have it be, well, we could do that. And if we're feeling like, you know, we need more meetings, find another time to, to go to stray from our two meetings a month and add, add to a meeting. Would that be your preference? It's yeah. Logist, realistically, yes. I would love to, to do more, but I, I think that that realistically would be my preference for right now. Okay, so let's, we'll, we'll start with the, so the next meeting will be September, four, Tuesday, September 14th at six. And then the, the one after that, just to have it on deck is September 28th at, um, oh, that's the election day. I mean, that's oh, wow. <laughs> Bad idea. How do, we, how do we feel about that? <laughs> yeah. Huh. Is I that realize. a problem for anyone? I mean, would people prefer not to? I thought there was a city policy of not holding public meetings on election day. I just didn't, mm. it didn't occur to me that that was it. So don't, Council Dwight is saying don't hold the meeting on election. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, it, 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 it presents problem for public attendance if that were the case. Right. It's, I mean, the, it, yeah. Gotcha. But I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule, but as I mean, again, that's one of those legacy things. We don't so, schedule meetings on election day. And is there a holiday? What about, is it too intense to do the September 14th and then September 21st? First, at the, I don't know about holidays. I don't have my holiday uh, filter on my calendar. Yes. The, the 21st is the Transportation and Parking Commission day. Ah, right. um, but what about the, the Monday, the 27th? I don't see anything on my calendar the day before the election uh right that's a good suggestion so why don't we say september 14th uh 6 p.m tuesday and then monday 6 p.m uh, the september 27th does that work for everyone and then go to second and fourth after that and then try to go to second and fourth and probably adding some meetings but what do you think Councilor dwight on the 27th i'm I'm having a procedure, as they euphemistically say, and I will be high as a kite. But oh, that would be fun, though. <laughs> I was going to say. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind chiming in, but we'll see what happens. And they, but ultimately, it's it's not unheard of to proceed without a member in some cases. So if 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 I die in surgery, you guys can still proceed. Or if I'm really high, maybe it'd be best that I not participate. But the fact is. Given these conflicts, and they're going to get more intense as we go now, because with school and with other meetings and other, we're getting back to full business, it's going to be harder to find an ideal date. So I say, take them where you can get them. And I would say, yes, put me down tentatively, pencil me in for the 27th, and we'll see what. We'll see so what is, there, is there a so chance you can make it, or you're saying there's no chance you'll be able there to? Is there is a chance. There is a chance. Yeah. I mean, the uh, uh, procedure's in the morning, and I'll. Okay, I don't want to push you, but you could also, I would say, submit, um, you know, you could submit to me thoughts on uh, on the agenda items and I will share them if, if you're not sure. feeling well. Okay, so those are our two next meetings and I'm looking for just one more motion. Move to adjourn, please. Second. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, should we vote? Oh, yeah. I, always, I think that last time too. I think I did that last time. This isn't the first time that I've like run out the door before the vote. Okay. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. And Councilor Foster. Yes. Thank you all. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Yes. I was so enraptured with the idea of uh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, magical mystery. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> excited by that. All right. I'm going to lose Bye. the war on drugs. There we go. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, Bye everyone. Good night.